In today's video, we're going to make a tier list of raw power of ultimates. Hope you guys are going to enjoy this one, and uh, here we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I'm going to turn off the voices in the background. So we are going to do a tier list, but only about raw power no synergy just the way that you can use the ultimate for yourself how it presents po the power level to the game so it's gonna be a little bit different than what you think so uh let's start maybe with uh we're gonna probably move it around a little bit so let's start with cypher Boop. because it's not really good it's reactive you need a dead body uh if your your ult is active right? If you get a kill, you don't get another orb, you cannot start to run with it, so it's like very, very active, and then also like the value that you get out of it, sometimes it's not really worth it. Fortunately for you, it's six orbs, so it's easy to get. Remember, when you're five out of six, you don't have to get an orb, because if you get, get into a gunfight, you will get the ult if you win it and then you instantly ult. So the only reason to pick up an orb as a cypher and get into a sticky situation while picking up the orb is when you know that there's already a dead body somewhere else on the map that you want to use the ult on. All right. Um, then we have... What do we, what do we say? What do we say? What do we say? We're going to take uh, Reyna, also tier poop, because it doesn't give you much. But you should be spamming this ultimate, and there's many, there's a lot of Reynas who actually don't use the ultimate because it throws away the recoil. I kid you not, at Immortal 3, I have heard several times from Reynas when I ask them why they're not using the ultimate, because it makes them shoot worse. Like, you can make this shit up. So, focus. If you play Reyna a lot, go to the practice range pop up the ultimate, or play Brimstone in practice range, do your, like, steam beacons, and just, you have the same effect. Fire rate is faster, recall uh, regeneration is faster, you equip your gun faster, like, the ult is nuts when you comes to actual value that you can get out of it, but itself, it doesn't really present anything for the team. Raw power is not really good, right? It's like... To some degree, it gives you something, but it's not really raw power good. It doesn't give you just by pressing the X button, you don't get anything done. All right. Um, let's say now we're going to do... All right, we're going to put the race for tier A for a moment. We'll see how that goes, because the raw power of this ult presents lethal damage, right? It scares away the players, so it's uh, the only problem with it is that it's for 8 orbs, and that's because of that, I put, I'm putting it right now for tier A. We're gonna see how much this changes when we're gonna add another uh, other agent. We're gonna put Sova right now, I would say below Showstopper, this might still like change a little bit, because it's kinda similar to the Showstopper. It presents lethal damage if you hit someone twice. Right? It showcases your position, which is bad. But it's you don't have to put yourself at risk when you do it, which is okay. Can be also an initiation tool, so it's not terrible. We might actually move it up a little bit, but the 8 orb makes it, in my eyes, less powerful than race. So we'll see how the context goes, but right now, I would put the Sova below race. Uh, let's go for KO Ultimate. Raw power of KO Ultimate... I would put it on A. It's a insanely valuable ult for yourself um, as an initiation tool. It it completely wrecks sentinels and it's a fantastic, uh, um, fantastic tool against chambers to like literally just make them useless. So I would say KO is definitely a tier A. If I play KO in ranked, whenever I have the ultimate, it literally changes the entire dynamic of the round. You just essentially an attack press X, use it as a Phoenix ult, and you run in. And hopefully, you convince the other players in your team to follow you. Remember, KO Ultimate gives you fire rate boost. Just like the Reyna, um, Reyna ult or Brimstone Steam Beacon. But then also the fire rate is boosted, the equip time of the, of the weapon is boosted, and reload time is boosted. So all of those three are affected. Now let's go for Brimstone. Brimstone, for me, the first ult that we're going to put at tier S. It's a phenomenal ult. Why? First, seven orbs, right? So it's easier to farm. It was a six orb and it was absolutely broken, by the way. Now, presents lethal damage. Can be used as a counter to many other ultimates. 
can kill players who are ulting like Sova or uh, let's say Gecko or um, present you a counter to other ultimates like the Lockdown. Um, it, it can zone out people and also you can just use it as a big grenade. Like all of that makes Brimstone's ultimate incredibly powerful and an incredible initiation tool or a stall tool, post-plant, pre-plant. It's so, so just flexible. You can use it for anything. So tier S for me, Brimstone, uh, is definitely one of the best ults in the game. Now uh, let's go, uh, let's go, let's go for Killjoy. I would put a somehow around B. I would say probably around C. Raw power, remember, remember? Raw power. This is like... It presents less value than... All right, let's put it B. Because it presents less value than, uh, than the KO ultimate. It's kind of similar when it comes to the KO ultimate because the, the goal is to push away the players, right? Or like initiate an attack. So I would probably put her right now on B. It's not really that useful on defense unless you play on retake and you like like the raw power of this ultimate is hard to get unless you really tailor like your round towards it and then still it doesn't really guarantee any results and uh, there are maps that is not really favoring as well because there are no good spots to use it so I would say right now we're putting Kildren on B and we're gonna see at the end um let's go for Omen oh woof Huh. You know what? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna go for this. Poop. Seven orber definitely needs a buff in my eyes, but for six orbs, maybe it would be too useful. I don't know. But this is like an ult that is... Uh, the raw power doesn't exist in this ultimate. It really doesn't exist in this ultimate. It's like loud as hell can be stopped by your opponent, so you get no value, uh, like, nah, tier poop, tier poop, I was, like, thinking maybe, maybe I can somehow argument that it can be tier C, but no, no, this is tier poop, this is tier poop, all right, let's go for another one, uh, let's go for chamber, raw power, tier A, operator for free, I mean, better operator, actually, because it shoots faster than normal operator nowadays. Um, and uh, after getting a kill, you get a better value as a trap, essentially, that slows down the people and stalls and boosts up your own personal economy. Good job, Chamber. Your ultimate is pretty fucking good. All right, let's go another one. Um, Deadlock. Tier B. Why? Because it's a bad showstopper. It can be used for initiation, but I would rather have Sova ultimate than Lockdown. Sorry, than, than uh, Deadlock's ultimate. I can't remember the name of it. So it's a 7 over, so that's an upside. But in general, this ultimate has limited range. It's 40 meters, right? So it's shorter range than Sova, shorter range than Showstopper, because that one has ultimate uh, infinite range when it gets shot. Uh, gets sh yeah, when you shoot it. Um, so definitely worse than that. So I would definitely put it in the same tier as Sova, but Sova is actually better. Uh, Annihilation, that's the name. Thank you. Thank you, Tokyo Telephone. All right, let's go next one. All right, raw power of Astra. I don't think I need to explain much. The raw power is just almost non-existent, but still better than those three. Like, at least it's proactive. You can do something proactively with it. So that's something. But um, it can have some uses for diffusing for example, right, for sticking it or for planting. So there's some value there, but the raw power of it is very, very low. All right, let's go right now with Viper. We're going to put it at tier B. Why? Because the raw power is there, but it can be avoided. So my experience with Viper Pit is, if I use the Viper Pit on defense, like to stall a, a, line, uh, a, a lane or something, it's typically just being avoided. People are just so scared of the Viper Spit that you don't get a lot of value out of it. And also your own teammates can grief your Viper Spit. Because if, if you, let's say, play bind, you ult on short, one-way showers, and then use the wall on B. If the players on B over push and die, then your Viper Spit is useless because you're going to have to retake the B players. So um, I would definitely put it on B. And 
the raw power is definitely better on attack, but we talk about like the overall thing here. So I just kind of put it on B. It's hard to sometimes get value out of it on attack as well, because it's like a fortification tool in most cases, instead of just like being a proactive one. If you proactive, if you use the ult proactively before planting, like trigger on the site, like there's some value to it, but it also like requires teammates that understand how to do it. So uh, raw power, B. I would say still more useful than uh, deadlock, but less useful than um then killjoy and uh and sova to some degree because it's not, not an initiation tool again guys we're talking about raw power raw power right now let's talk about jet so if this would be a six orber it would be a tier s because the this is the best gun in the game um and allows you to have the fastest movement in the game because you run with the, with the speed of the of, uh, of holding a knife and you're able to be fully accurate while jumping up, gliding, sliding, doing acrobatic shit. And it's, uh, this needs to be nerfed. But I'm not putting it on tier S because it's still just a gun for yourself. So the raw power is there. That's why I'm putting it on tier A. But it doesn't really give you that much for the entire team. But it builds up economy. It's very similar to Chambers, right? But I would prefer um, for the team... A chamber ultimate in defense, for example, while this ultimate for attack and so on. So it's like there's different context needed. But raw power is very similar to them. But this is the best gun in the game. Uh, all right. So now we have what else? Well, let's go for Harbor. Very similar to Killjoy and Sova. I would actually say that let's put it in between here. Actually, I would put it like this. I would, I would prefer to have an ultimate from Harbor than an ultimate from Sova because it can be used proactively, um, reactively as well for when you want to style a site. It gives you info as well. So there's some value here. Uh, so yeah, tier B, but like spearheading tier B. So it's like very close to A, but not exactly, but pretty decent. Now, Breach, I would say it's an A tier. Because it's proactive, reactive, and gives you a lot of value, instant value, and cannot be dodged, right? The stun is not the best itself, but it, you cannot deny the value out of the breach ultimate itself when you compare it for Harbor, for example. Harbor, you can just run around and not get stunned, right? Here, you clear a specific, specific zone with that. All right, let's um, go for Fade. One of the best ultimates um, from tier A, I would say. Let's rank this up, actually. Let's, uh, let's do it this way. Raw power. I would say this is the raw power of those ultimates. So, Fade, definitely the best out of tier A right now that we have here. Um, incredible value. 12 seconds of your opponents not hearing anything, uh, not even knowing if there's plant or not. Um, boosting up your prowlers to be incredibly powerful uh, enemies for your opponent that cannot be that cannot be ignored and deals decay damage. So that is actually incredibly powerful ultimate that you should never use for faking. This is one of the best ultimates in the game when it comes to doing executes. If you execute with this ult, just push in. You get so much value out of it. Um. All right, now we have Gecko. Gecko is pretty poop. I would say tier C. Still better than Astra, but the ability to shoot it down with no value is really not good. Like, if you play against people who actually shoot their guns, entire as Gecko's kit is just pretty bad. So we're putting it at tier C. Uh, it's like not terrible, it's like pretty close to B, but we're gonna keep it on C. And then we have, uh, let's go for Sky. Pretty good initiation tool. Mm, gives info. But I wouldn't put it on tier A. I would put it on tier B. If this would be a 6 orb, it would be tier A. But with 7, I would put it on tier B. Um, or like end of tier A. Like lower end of A, I would say. Actually, what if we do create a row below? Ay, caramba. Too many. Let's do 
this and we say tier A minus. And we'll put this one here and this one here. There we go. This makes sense, I would say. Uh, and then we have Sage, which is poop. I swear to God, if you ask someone what's, what's the best ultimate in the game, and if they ever say, oh, Sage is amazing, you literally know that this player doesn't know how to play Valorant. Sage is one of the worst ultimates in the game because it requires your team essentially to lose. Like, it's so bad. It's critically in, of critical importance to understand that you need a dead body for it of your own teammate that then you have to like play around and your teammate's body have to be in safe spot or you have to lose also your wall like the raw power of it is just nowhere to be seen so many times in ranked i see sage not use a single ultimate in a half because they don't have the opportunity for it and also don't have the uh, like the brain power to ask for other piece of utility from other players to be possible to rest someone it's incredibly bad ult. Not only that, it's an 8 over. It's poop. Absolute poop. All right. And then you can, like, look, this, this is actually a composition and rank that people play. <laughs> and they add, for example, Sova, and you're ending up with a, with, uh, with a team of 8 orb, 6 orb, 6 orb, 7 orb, 8 orb, with value nowhere to be seen like that's how bad this is all right so all right let's go for uh we have neon right now neon i would put it like tier a minus because it runs out of time which is not a case with jet and chamber so it's a weapon that is very good but it's not at it's not as potent as the jet uh, knives but the upside is that you get another slide and you regain your fuel to run faster so you can sonic more in that round so there's some additional raw power like you deplete your fuel you pop the ultimate you use you have used already your slide so you can plan around it and get a little bit more value out of the neon uh like specific kit and the gun is pretty nuts if you're consistently can, can hit headshots with it it's incredible but you should aim for the higher part of the body anyway because it's essentially a rail gun so it's like decent but not phenomenal so we put it at the tier A minus, but at the bottom of it, because those two ultimates are definitely better. Now we have Yoru. As a raw power, I would put it somewhere here. Because it's such a synergetic ultimate that the raw power is not that present. You can go for kills with it, like with Shorty over Stinger, like I do, right? But the raw power of it, I don't think it's good. It's an ultimate that is incredibly beneficial for the entire team if they play around it and with it but not itself itself if you go for the kills you need to have incredible game sense to be consistently getting kills with it and I, by the way I, I made stats for how is my effectiveness with your ultimate but i didn't make the video anyway last ultimate phoenix haha <laughs> got you because it's tier s one of the best ultimates in the game it's incredible a six orber you can get four to five ultimates on average on every half it's incredible you can get so much value out of it it gives you another uh literally another chance at getting a kill at a player right so in 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 solo queue it's incredibly valuable it reloads your gun for free when you go back and it heals you as well and you regain the armor like, the raw power of it, the potential of this ult is incredible. And if I could choose to have this ultimate on all of the agents that I play, with other pieces of utility from the other agents, I would choose either Brimstone or Phoenix. Those two are so incredibly powerful. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment if you disagree with any of my justification of it i didn't actually move around all of the uh, a lot of the ultimates i'm pretty happy with this hope you guys enjoyed it see you guys next time bye bye